This is the first edition of The Great Gatsby by Scott Fitzgerald. This dust jacket is perhaps the most remarkable thing about the book and it's been called one of the most iconic book jacket designs in 20th century American literature. To understand something about why it's uh, so startling a jacket for publication date, uh, which is April 1925, we might look at some earlier examples. This is a book published 30 years earlier, The Ebb Tide, by Robert Louis Stevenson and Lloyd Osborne. Um, you can see the publisher has basically advertised a list of other books on the front. And the idea behind this was that the jacket was temporary and would be thrown away when the buyer bought the book. Uh, the jacket was simply there to protect the book while it was being browsed in the bookshop. Mm -hmm. And if you look inside the jacket, you see the designer lavish more care and attention on the front of the book than the jacket itself. And even Scott Fitzgerald's earlier works had been published with fairly simple jackets like this one for the beautiful and damned. And you can see that the uh, illustration on the front cover is very like a sort of magazine illustration of the time and there's not very much colour, there's just the orange disc to bring the book uh, to life a little bit. But for The Great Gatsby, Fitzgerald had decided that he wanted to create something more artistic. The jacket itself does not represent literally the events of the novel. Um, it's rather a sort of symbolic evocation of the events. Um, the most noticeable feature are the two eyes staring over the um, Coney Island scene beneath, uh, two eyes of a, a woman. Now Fitzgerald was in the middle of writing The Great Gatsby when he was first shown the dust jacket art. He was in America at the time and his publisher showed him the early drafts of the jacket. Fitzgerald then moved to Italy uh, and the south of France in order to finish the book, but he wrote back to his publisher saying, uh, for God's sake, don't give that jacket to anybody else. I've written it into the book. Uh, this is a unique occurrence, as far as anybody can tell, where the actual design of the dust jacket influenced the writing of the novel. The two eyes of the cover um, are uh, echoed in the book by the two eyes of uh, the oculist watching down from the billboard over the inhabitants of the book. But um, obviously the character's different on the jacket. It's a female face, but it's also reminiscent of Daisy's face that haunts Gatsby in his quest to win her back. Um, the jacket is also uh, very finely detailed in a way that um, Fitzgerald's earlier jackets hadn't been. Um, it's possible, for example, to read into the irises of the girl's eyes on the cover uh, two reclining nudes uh, just inside the eye. There's also um, the contrast with the lights of the Coney Island scene at the bottom. Um, it looks like exciting, representing the, the excitement of that era, but also dangerous. It's hard to tell whether there's an explosion happening. Um, and that also echoes the car crash in the novel. Um, one of the falling lights in the sky is, could be sodium glare or it could be a tear falling from one of the eyes. So it's a very evocative, symbolic jacket um, unusual for this time. Um, it's not actually an especially rare book. There were over 18,000 copies printed of the first edition. But what is rare is the survival of the dust jacket. Um, there are a couple of reasons for this. Um, notably, the jacket itself is printed just very slightly too tall for the book, which you can see there. And so the jacket always has a tendency to chip at the edges. The paper gets brittle and chips away. Um, and so that uh, uh, argues against its survival. There are other interesting things about the jacket. One thing that collectors often have to be wary of is that there was a printing mistake on the back of the jacket. Uh, the name J. Gatsby was printed with a lowercase j, and so every copy of the first issue jacket was corrected by hand uh, and the capital letter J written in over the lowercase. So this shows that uh, this is a, a first issue jacket. We don't know very much about the artist who produced this jacket. Um, we know that he was uh, Francis Cougat. He was born in Spain. His family emigrated to Cuba and then came to America that way. His brother uh, Xavier Cougat was a Cuban band leader in America. Um, but Cougat did no more jackets. This is the only dust jacket that has been identified as his work. 
He worked on one Hollywood film for Douglas Fairbanks, it's called The Gaucho, um, the next year, 1926. But apart from that, he exhibited only once in New York and died in relative obscurity in the early 1980s. So it's an enigmatic jacket and an enig enigmatic jacket artist. The probable order of these sketches was that uh, the first one here is a sort of railway scene. This, um, although it actually resembles um, more Spain than uh, Long Island, this is the Long Island Railroad. Um, and here you get the first conception of the faces in the sky watching the action, the, the eyes in the clouds. So uh, that, that's an evocative beginning. It then seems that Kugat went through various sketches developing that idea. We've got one here where he's got um, a single eye and a sort of rather like there's a note here profile um, as if it's he's trying to do something like Picasso or something and this uh, th this cityscape down here very rudimentarily sketched but uh, uh, meant to be Long Island again apparently. Um, there are also various attempts to to capture uh, eyes in the sky here. This sketch shows two eyes and again below there's a, a kind of fairground. Um, and then it develops here into a more uh, realized design with the eyes almost as they are in the book and um, there's the turning shape of the uh, carnival wheel um, but at the bottom the cityscape is, is actually Manhattan. Um, um, which makes it quite urban, which is not in, exactly in suiting with the, the book. Uh, this design here, uh, which is a study for a nocturnal carnival, uh, gives the colour, um, shows him uh, trying out the colour for the first time, the colour that would end up in the finished jacket, this, this dense night blue, um, giving the party atmosphere, but also the sense of unease. The jacket itself adds huge value to surviving copies of The Great Gatsby. It's, it's perhaps the most <laughs> outstanding example of a jacket adding value. Um, we have this book priced at £120,000. Uh, without its jacket, um, it's in good condition, but I'd expect that to be priced at something like £5,000. So it's often said that the Gatsby jacket is the most expensive single piece of paper in 20th century book collecting.